Hey, what's going on? This is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment, and today we're getting ready to do a wedding ceremony. We're at the Abernathy Center in Oregon City, and today I want to cover a topic uh, that's been on my mind for quite a while, and it's explaining to people what microphones to use for their ceremony. What, when to use a handheld and when to use a lapel. Why would you use a handheld over a lapel? Are all lapels the same? Are all the brands the same? Is there a different lapel? So I'm gonna cover those questions because that's usually what comes up in um, my meetings with my clients and they're not understanding like, oh, I can just talk loud. It's gonna be super awkward for the people here and nobody can hear you in, in the back. So in our consultation, I try to find out is it just going to be an officiant? Are they a guy or girl? It makes a huge difference, um, especially on their attire and how we attach a lapel mic. So that's one thing that I want to cover. Um, who's going to be speaking? Are they going to, you know, pass a microphone back and forth? Is it important that it's not in your pictures? So these are all things to think about. Is it in a chapel or is it on a windy beach? So this can dramatically affect a lot of different things. So let's start with the lapel and what I have found a lot of the events that we do, because we have a videography team too. So we do a bunch of events where we're not doing the setup. And so you got on the low end, you got a Radio Shack, and then you got a Sennheiser, you got Shures, and you got all different lines. So your lower end DJs are gonna have a bass line, so that'd be like the Shure like BLX. They're great if the DJ's right there, but as soon as they get farther away, people stand, it can cut in and out. And to me, that's the worst thing is having a ceremony where you have the audio that sounds good, but it keeps cutting in and out. So you wanna think about the quality. The microphones that we use are the same ones that they use on concert stage. I cried once when I bought them, but at least I know when I get to a place or a venue, I rerun my signal, I don't have to worry about dropouts. It's one last thing that I have to worry about. So we have about $1,200 microphones that we use. So what we have here is we have our Shure QLXD. So you'll notice here, this one says minister, and this one says groom. And so these are two different microphones. So this is, I believe, a super corduroy. And so what that is, is it's gonna be connected here and it's a more directional sound. So it's coming from here. If that microphone is farther away or they're out of the pickup pattern, it's gonna be super, super quiet. And the point of that is to reject a lot of the background noise. So the only uh, voice that's speaking is really, really close. So you have to be really, really close to it. Now, the groom's microphone is not, I think it's just a choreoid. And so what this is, is we put a little bit farther down, so then that way when he's reading, it will pick up his voice, but the bride's about the same distance. So as long as they're not, you know, staying on opposite ends, if they're about a good three feet from each other, it's gonna sound really good. We're gonna have it down there, but it is more prone to getting feedback from the speaker. So you have to really EQ these. Now, our company, opposed like a lot of other companies, just run this right into an analog mixer. We use a digital mixer, so then that way we can pull out some of those harsh frequencies and the chance of feedback is gonna be a lot less. Uh, we can also add some compression in case it gets really, really loud. We can just you know, add some dynamics to make it sound a little bit sweeter. But those are the uh, microphones that we prefer to use. Now, when not to use these. If we're on a windy beach, we can put windscreens on these, but it's probably a no-go, uh, depending on how windy it is. Um, so that's when we're gonna switch to a handheld microphone. So these are ideal. The only time that these are ideal is if it's super windy or we have to have more than the minister, the bride and groom speak on the microphone. If we have to have a sister give in a reading, that's when we're gonna switch to a handheld. So in our packages, it comes with two microphones, either one of these and one handheld or two of these, but we can add uh, more microphones to our package. So this is a handheld microphone. Um, we use the Shure 58 Beta. It's a nice, clean sound. And these microphones sound amazing. When we do speeches for our reception, we use one of these. Now, my biggest thing is when I tell somebody that's setting up a accompanying microphones get four of the exact same microphones because I this is actually from our reception kit so I can take this microphone bring it over to our ceremony because we have our own box for a ceremony and we have our own box for the reception and so this is what we use now 
this sounds really good when you talk right here. I tell people it's almost like an ice cream cone that you don't like. So I usually try to teach people how to talk on the microphone. Now the problem with ceremonies, I've had it before where the bride and groom are getting ready to do their reading and this is what happens. It's in their pocket, getting ready to pull it out for the reading. They're holding hands and then they just start reading and they forget to hold it up there. Or what they'll do is they'll hold it, they'll have it where they're holding hands and then the bride will hold it up for the groom when, they're, when she's speaking and then for the groom and vice versa. But the problem is they hold it out here and it just doesn't sound good. This type of microphone has to be right here. It will reject all kinds of background noise. It's gonna be sounding sweet and it's gonna be nice and clear, but you gotta make sure to hold it up or else it doesn't work. It doesn't look as good in photos, so you gotta decide, you know, all the different elements, what's going on, and that will decide on what type of microphone to use. You can use a combination of both. I've done a ceremony up to six. So I've had three lapels, and then I've also had uh, two of these, and then had to mic up a vitamin string quartet. That particular wedding, we did no music whatsoever, but we were there to do the mic support. So it's really gonna depend on the situation in what we have going on and what microphones to use. We can also provide a mic stand, so if the officiant's gonna be reading off a, a tablet or a prompter, then she doesn't have the ability to hold a microphone, we can provide a stand, but we need to know that beforehand. If somebody's off singing off to the side and doing a reading, then we can set up a microphone on a mic stand. Um, if somebody's playing some musical instruments, we can use the lapel and then put a different kind of capsule on it so that way it will capture what they're playing. So as long as we know ahead of time, we can pretty much prepare for any situation when it comes to microphones. So when I was talking about it matters if it is a guy or girl for the ceremony. So a lot of times, and sometimes even male officiants too, where they'll come in and they'll wear a shirt like this and they'll have no coat on, so we have nowhere to hide the wires for this. So we gotta like run it through their shirt, put it in their pocket in the back. Now where this becomes uh, problematic is when we have a girl officiant, a lot of times they're coming in a nice dress. There's no um, slit in the dress in the front or the back. So there's nowhere to hang this. So what we have to do, if you can almost picture this, I'll put a picture up, is we have to clip it on the back of their dress right here. And if they got videographers, they're clipping all their stuff there. And so it can be really problematic. And it's just, I mean, we can get by, but I just, because it is so uncomfortable looking um, for them. You know, they deal with it and it's fine. It's just an in inconvenience. And so that's one thing to think about if you're having a male or female officiant and say, hey, we have a lapel. What's the best way we can do this? And a lot of times they can get a belt and then they can clip this onto the belt. So if you're hiring a professional officiant, a lot of times that they're gonna have a belt to wear with the dress that blends in with their dress, so that way they can wear a lapel pack. My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. If you guys have any more questions about ceremony microphone, leave them in the comments below. Thank you.